Hi, welcome back for our third week of this class, Before I Go. Two weeks ago in chapter 12 of the Gospel of John, we looked at Jesus who was revealed in three encounters with him. And then last week, we changed focus a bit in chapter 13 as we looked at what Jesus wants his disciples and us doing and uh, what that looked like, humbly serving, loving one another. We also looked at what Jesus himself was doing, the mission he was on that would take him to the cross to die for our sins. And Jesus dropped some hard news on his disciples, some bombshells. Um, he was telling them that where he was going, they couldn't follow. He was leaving them and, and that one of them would betray him. And, and even that Peter would disown him three times. You know, it kind of reminds me of a time about 30 years ago. I was a manufacturing supervisor up in the Silicon Valley, and I had a moment that was kind of like that loss and disappointment that maybe the, the disciples were feeling sort of. You see, I was doing well in this job as a supervisor, and, and I wanted to take some training to further in my role. So I asked my boss, could I take this training? And his answer was, mm, I'd rather we didn't invest in you taking this training. Let's talk later. I immediately thought, uh-oh, something's wrong. Uh, this isn't good. I sat down with him later in his office, and he said, um, yeah, I really don't want to invest in sending you to this training because I'm going to be moving you out of this position. And then he went on to tell me, we have a project that we want to lead. It's a big project, and I need someone on it that I know can take it, can make it successful. And we're going to implement some new software across our whole business. I need someone to be the lead on that effort. And I want that to be you. And then he went on to tell me, he said, I know you know manufacturing really well, but I'm going to sign you a co-leader who knows the rest of the business, the things you don't know, that to work with you. And I'll work with you. And so I'm, you know, I'll help train you up, guide you, mentor you, whatever I can do to make you successful, because this is a big project. It's a big opportunity. <laughs> what I thought was going to be a loss, a disappointment, ended up being the biggest opportunity in my career. And looking back, that event, that project opened a door for 30 years in the software industry. There's been more good, there's been more development, there's been more fulfillment that's come out of that than I could have ever imagined. That boss, yeah, that boss became a good friend. He developed me, poured into me, but we became good friends over that process. And with the help of that co-leader, I learned about a whole broader picture of how a business operates. That's sort of like what we're looking at here. In these chapters in John, especially here in John 14, because as we move here, <clears throat> Jesus wants to turn from sharing hard news to sharing the hope, the opportunity that, that his disciples had and that we have. And that's why his first words in the chapter are, do not let your heart be troubled. And then he begins to focus their eyes on the Father, which is what we're going to do. But before we dig in. I want you to do something with me, if you would. I want you to just close your eyes. And I want you to try to picture your earthly father. Just what does he look like? Something about him, something that you remember. Okay? All right, open your eyes. I did that. Some of you immediately got a picture in your head that was a good picture. Dad, who was loving, engaged. He taught you. You admire him. It's a great picture in your head. Others of you don't have a great picture. Maybe dad wasn't engaged, wasn't there, maybe let you down, or maybe even hurt you. And some of you have a hard time painting a picture at all. Maybe you didn't know your earthly father. Maybe that, that person is missing in your life. I start there because whatever is inside that frame in your head, whatever you just filled it with, whatever picture, is the frame of reference that we have for what a father is. And, and I'm going to tell you that no matter what's in there, even if it's a great picture, it's not big enough. It's not enough to encapture, en encapsulate who God is, and we're going to see that tonight. We inherently know that, don't we? We inherently know that God is 
different. God the Father is has got to be different than an earthly father. And yet we have this frame of reference. And that's why we're going to see here in chapter 14 that, that Philip asks Jesus, he says, Lord, show us the Father. That will be enough for us. Because isn't that it? Isn't that the question we all have? We all want to see the Father. We all want to know our Heavenly Father. Well, tonight, in this study, John is going to show us, through Jesus, we do know our Heavenly Father. And we have a way to Him. So set aside that earthly father picture, whatever's in that frame, I want you, would you just set that aside? And I'm going to ask Jesus if he'll help us with that. Lord Jesus, uh, you came to show us the father. You came us to point, you came to point us to him and, and to create a way back to him. Would you, Lord, help us to grasp what John has written, what he's captured, what you said, your words that show us this picture of the father. Would you help us with that tonight? We pray in your name. Amen. So let's dive into chapter 14. And as we do, I'm going to ask, open the Bible with me, your Bible app, or if you have a paper Bible, open it up and let's read along together. And as we start, I want to just recap where we've been. Chapter 14 starts with Jesus speaking to his disciples. He's just finished telling them the hard news, like I said. He's leaving. They can't come. They can't follow. One of them's a betrayer, and Peter's going to disown him three times. Imagine that. Yeah, everyone's going, Peter? What? And now, Jesus wants to refocus them from the chaos of this moment to the hope of the future that they have in him and in the Father. So let's read the first few verses in chapter 14, shall we? Jesus speaking, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place that I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is refocusing them. And, and in this, he's focusing on a, a core theme. It's a core theme in Jesus' ministry. It's a core theme in the entirety of the Bible. And that is getting back to the Father. Fancy word for that might be being reconciled with the Father. But it's, it's about getting back to the Father. The entire Bible is that story. Because see, his plan, the Father's plan was the Garden of Eden. We walked together. We talked together. Adam and Eve and God walked in each other's presence in the garden, and they just enjoyed the garden together. But Adam and Eve had the choice, the freedom to choose, and they chose to disobey. And now a perfect and righteous and good God cannot be in presence of Adam and Eve who know good and evil. And so now there's separation. Now God no longer walked with us. And now instead of it being God and us in the garden, well, now it's God separate from us. And then throughout the whole of the Old Testament, we see this picture of God over us, God over his people, maintaining a remnant, carrying them forward, trying to preserve that remnant until such time as he got to Moses. And with Moses, he established the tabernacle in the wilderness, a place that God could dwell among his people, and it became God among us. And it was that way in the tabernacle and the temple until a baby was born in Bethlehem. And he would be called Emmanuel, God with us. And Jesus came, walked, lived, grew up with us. He walked amongst us. He was us. He, he, is, he lived the, the life that we live. He grew up as we grew up. He experienced us. He was with us. But he came to point us to an even better future that's to come, an even better relationship, an even closer one. Jesus declares that 
that there is one way back to the Father. It's the thing the Father's been working on. It's the plan he's laid out. And there's only one way, and that way is Jesus. He says, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. This key message is such a declaration. I am the way, the truth, and the life. But he's already kind of said it in the verses before. Let's go back and look at that. Jesus says, I am the way. And yet previously in verse three, he says, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back to take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. Jesus is the way to the Father. He's going to take us back. He says, I am the truth. In the very first verse, he says, you believe in God, believe also in me. God is truth. I am truth. And I am the life. My father's house has many rooms. My father's eternal house, and I go to prepare a place for you, a room with your name on it in my father's eternal house. And I'll come to take you to be with me that you may also be where I am. Jesus is the way to life, not only life eternal with, in God's house, but also now in this life, beginning now, the ability to have life, experience it with God. Then Jesus turns his focus from, I am the way to the Father, and he shows us he's also the way to know the Father. Let's look at verse 11, or 7 through 11. If you really know me, you'll know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. That will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you for such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? I Words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me, doing his work. Believe me when I say I am in the Father and that the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Jesus is laying out a clear truth that if you know Jesus, you know the Father. I'm, I'm remembering back to just not long ago where Pastor Kevin took us through a study of Hebrews on Sunday morning. And you remember in that first chapter of Hebrews, Hebrews 1.3 said, the sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. You see Jesus, you see the Father. You know Jesus, you know the Father. Now at this point, the disciples are still trying to grapple with this. Again, I'm thankful for them. They're human. They're confused. It's, it's a lot to take in. And Philip asks that somewhat bewildered question, just, could you just show us the Father? Jesus is trying to explain as best as he can so that they could comprehend. And in these following verses, he starts to unpack what that means. He begins to describe his and his father's relationship and our father, our relationship with the Father. First thing he says is, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Now, in our mortal, time-bound, matter-based world that we live in, I, that's just not possible. I mean, if I am in the Father, but the Father is in me, you can't have something inside another thing and that other thing inside the something. It's just, you can't be both. <laughs> And, and, and yet, we know God is both three and one. We know he's Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and he is God. And so that may be something we only grasp when we're in our Father's house. But the truth is this. The truth to take away is Father and Son exist together. There's a oneness there's a, there's a unity. There's a, there's a closeness of existence. They're just, they're intertwined. That's the first thing he's trying to share with us. The second thing is he says, the words I say are not my own, rather it is the Father living in me who's doing his work. The truth here is not only is there oneness in who they are, but there's oneness in what they're doing. They work in harmony. The Father working through the Son. The Son, I don't speak of my own authority. It's the Father doing his work through me. 
What a neat picture of unity. I've heard it called the family business. Jesus, the Father, the Holy Spirit, they're in the family business, and they're inviting us to join them in the family business. It's proof of the oneness of Father and Son. Thinking back again to Hebrews, what a comfort. As we studied that Jesus is our great high priest, and now you think about Jesus, one with God the Father, and yet he's our intercessor. So the one we, who intercedes for us, the one that we would pray to, the one that then that lifts our prayers up before the Father, is God himself. What a comfort that is. What, a, what access, what a relationship offer we have. All right, so this is mainly though talking about God the Father and the Son and how they relate. Where do we fit into this? And that's what Jesus shows next. Verse 12 through 14. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. And I will do anything you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. There's some beautiful, beautiful truth that Jesus unpacks here. First of all, he's saying that you will do the works I've been doing. Whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And that doing those works equates us and connects us to the Father. See, just as it was the Father working through Jesus, Jesus not doing things on his own, but doing them the Father's work, the Father living him, we have that same offer. We will be doing that work Jesus did, the Father's work. We have that same opportunity. It's, um, it points back to that believers in Jesus will have the Father working through them. That's the, that's the promise of the relationship we have, is we get to experience that. And then there's this phrase that is almost too much to grasp. And they will do even greater things than these. And the they we're talking about is those who believe in Jesus. Guess what? That's, us, that's those of us who have claimed as, as Lord and as Savior. This is us he's talking about. They will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. Part of this we're going to unpack next week when we talk about the Holy Spirit. But, but part of this is Jesus talking to the twelve, but thinking forward to his church. I mean, think about it. Here's twelve disciples that, yes, are going to go and do the work he's been doing. But Jesus looks through time and all eternity to the end to say, I know my church is going to be here for centuries and centuries, and there are going to be many that will be doing the works I've been doing. The scale of his church. Yeah, greater things. But there's also an aspect of, of what it takes, because here there's the disciples, the 12 that have seen Jesus, heard him, followed, walked in his footsteps. But what a greater thing to be able to then, like you and I, if you follow Jesus, to be able to follow by faith. We didn't get to walk behind him. We didn't get to shake a hand, rub elbows, eat a meal with him. No, but, but yet by faith we believe. John 20, 29 said, Blessed are those who have not seen yet have believed. It's even greater to be able to do God's work through that faith. Again, I'm thinking back to the, the study of Hebrews of the, the, the uh, Hall of Faith, right? Chapter 11. And all those folks that by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. Yeah, that's greater. That's a greater thing than these. And then Jesus includes a promise. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. The Father will be establishing a relationship with you, says Jesus through me. The Father will establish a relationship with you and I through Jesus. And in that relationship, he will work through us. He will work in us. He will do his work through us so we can bring glory to his name. 
just as Jesus desires to bring glory to God, we get to take part in the same thing. We get to bring glory to the Father. And Jesus says, I'm going to be actively involved. I will do whatever you ask to help you do that. You want to know the Father? Do his work. Be engaged in his work. And Jesus will assist. Jesus will give you whatever you ask for in his name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. I, I think I know what that looks like in my own life, in my own experience. I have a, I have a, a, a journey I've been on that maybe will remind you of an experience you've had. A 17-year cancer journey. For 17 years and six months, I've been living with and fighting and battling cancer. Uh, many ups and downs, four surgeries, two radiation treatments, a two-year-long clinical, clinical trial, um, plenty going on. I remember many times when I was mad, I yelled at God, I was, I was just, this isn't right, this is not fair. I had those times. I'll set the times that I just got discouraged. I got sad. I, Yes, I did. But I remember early in this journey, in the first year, having processed through some of that, I remember being in prayer to God. I was out on a walk one night. And I remember getting to the point in that time with God that I said, God, I got to trust you with this. I do trust you with this. And I, and I put it in his hands at that point. I said, God, I trust you that you can do something with this and that you are not going to just leave me hanging out to dry. I don't know what this, where this goes or what the journey looks like, but I, I trust you. And I, I just need to say that I trust you. And then I got the opportunity to see him respond surgery that goes well, a treatment that, that works, a period of time the cancer goes dormant. I got to learn that three months at a time to trust God. And along the way, I got to see God provide. I got to see God strengthen me when I was weak. I got to see miracles literally of healing. I got to see purpose. My prayer grew during that time. Because see, it now, now I started to realize who God is. I got to experience him. And so now my prayer was, God, not only do I trust you, but, but I want you to glorify yourself in this. Bring glory to yourself in this cancer. I think you can, you can glorify yourself. Do whatever is going to bring you glory. And I saw his love. And I saw his provision. I received his strength. I learned about his power. More and more, I learned to just celebrate my cancer journey because more and more I got to experience God and see a fuller picture of who my father is. And he just kept answering prayers and kept answering prayers, including last month, just, just this last month in August, I've been watching a tumor that was the latest outcropping of my cancer and it had been growing for over a year. And three months ago, we almost started a radiation regimen on it. And then in early August, I took a scan and it was gone. And I know that my job, the Father's work, is to give him the glory. So the Father is glorified. And because of Jesus, I can just lift up this praise to God. God, you get the glory. My job is to tell my story. And so I'm doing that. And I get to experience along the way who he is. We have an awesome father. And whatever picture you have of that father, whatever picture I have even now, is too small. It's a far greater opportunity to follow him than we can ever ask or imagine. It's a far closer relationship than we can grasp. He's a father we can love, admire, revere, worship more than we realize. Here's the truth. What Jesus has shown us tonight is our Father wants us with him. He's always wanted us with him. He wants us to know him. And he wants us to fully experience a relationship with him. And all of that is accomplished through Jesus. 
So let's finish tonight and just give God praise. That's about the only way I can think to finish our study tonight. So pray with me if you would. God, Father God, Lord Jesus, Spirit of God, I just praise you. I praise you that, Father, you've always wanted us. You've wanted to be in relationship. Well, you want us to know you. you you've set in place a plan and you gave your son so that we could be reconciled to you. And I praise you for that. I give glory to your name. Would you help us, Lord, to see you in fullness? Would you give us, give us the ability to be able to follow you so that we can then learn to be involved in your work and learn more and more with each passing day, month, and year who you are? Oh, we give you praise in Jesus' name and for the glory of the Father. Amen. Thanks so much for viewing the teaching online. Please remember to join us for a time of discussion beginning at 7.30 p.m. To join, please visit our Wednesday Night at Shoreline online page on our website and click Join Discussion next to the group with the first letter of your last name. We will dig deeper into the truths we just heard and spend more time in fellowship and prayer. See you there.